In today's episode, I will take on the gruesomely difficult task of surviving in Frostpunk 2. On the highest difficulty level, I will colonize Frostland. This will be a challenge because I don't have much experience with this game. Honestly, I was curious to see how I do, as one of the most frequent complaints in the Steam comments is that the game is just too easy. Besides, people are also saying that the game no longer has the same vibe as the first one, and I have to agree with that. Personally, it doesn't bother me, because now it's not just about the city surviving, but about finding its own path in the process of dominating the frozen world. And somehow, that vision resonated with me as part of the second chapter of the campaign. But this video isn't a review, so I'm switching to utopia mode now, because I won't be spoiling the story for you. Eh, why do I do this to myself? And now before you lie the beautiful frozen and windswept peaks a home for 8,000 chosen ones, who will probably die here. Right from the start, I'm short on housing, food and basic goods. There aren't really any luxury goods in this game. The society of this city is divided into foragers, thinkers and machinists. Don't worry, there will be more of them in the future. What made me happy was access to a decent amount of resources, especially coal, food and basic materials in general. First, I sent out icebreakers to gain access to these resources, because aside from construction materials, I didn't have any within my basic range. This was rather unfortunate because Every day counted for me, and in 40 weeks, the first frost would unfortunately arrive. Next, I built the first residential districts. Whoever doesn't have shelter during the frost will simply die. Next to the housing, I built greenhouses that will produce food. It was also very important to establish a city hall. Because, you know, democracy and these people need their representation. Everything is beautifully coming together. In fact, the city hall allows me to collect a portion of taxes and request additional funding, whatever I can get, of course. Though not everyone was happy about that. To ease tensions a bit, I allowed the foragers to choose the topic of debate in the parliament. This time it was supporting an expedition and most people were in favor of it, including me, so I immediately moved to a vote. Beautiful. The bill passed. The next agenda will be given to the machinists. Some might call such actions corruption. But I'll use that money to build the first coal mine, especially since my citizens just got scared of the approaching cold. Yes, I know. Additionally, I built a sawmill, prefab production, and a research institute in the residential district. The research institute itself gives me access to a pretty large number of ideas to research, which influence the spirit of the city. The first thing I'll invent is a better generator, but one that's adaptive to multiple fuel sources, not just oil. Unfortunately, in week 20, my first people died due to a lack of housing and the cold. That's why two more districts were built, though they weren't as optimal as the first three. I also introduced homeschooling to have more active workers. However, I had to negotiate to get that law passed. The foragers decided to support me in exchange for a law I would pass next. I had 40 weeks for that. The first frosts were still coming, oh no. Since I still hadn't solved my resource problem, I decided to build a logistics center. Maybe beyond my glacier, I'll have better luck. As more frosts approached, I sent an expedition to search for coal and oil. In the meantime, some visitors found me, though they couldn't settle in because I didn't have the proper law. Although, I really don't know why they'd want to live here, since everyone faces starvation. I promised to introduce some legal solutions. The foragers found oil. I hope it's more than just those tracks in the snow. By the way, those tracks lead somewhere. Alright, there's oil, but right now I care more about that coal mine. But before I could connect those resources, I had to build a second logistics center. Otherwise, the route would have been much more roundabout. This way, it's half the distance. In week 73, due to worsening living conditions, a new faction of overseers was formed. They were for progress, merit and tradition, and supported the laws I had already passed. Their cool ability was increasing production efficiency, which solved some of my problems. Next, I wanted to invent heaters for smaller settlements. Because it turns out that temporary outposts delivered significantly fewer resources at this difficulty level. Who would have guessed, right? Also, my scavenger teams just found the first cores. They are super important because first, we can't manufacture them and they're required for more efficient upgrades and those were probably the last safe places to explore. The rest are deadly dangerous. A few weeks later, after depleting the deposits, I set up a permanent extraction outpost. Because of this, I also had to upgrade the road I was using to transport resources. A new faction of bums, or rather bohemians, formed who are the complete opposite of the overseers. They stand for adaptation, equality and reason. So this is how the cross-section of my happy society ultimately looks. Our old enemy, the whiteout, is expected to arrive within 80 weeks. I wonder if I will prepare, because at this moment I'm barely managing. That's why I'm setting up the 
the first heaters. Thanks to this, my residential areas have become zero emission, at least for now. I'm also withdrawing all my survival teams and sending them to explore this region. I need food, and I need it badly, because it will run out in seven weeks. The food supplies are running out very fast, really very fast. Eat less! Another temperature drop, now down to minus 50. The food had long since run out, which caused my society's satisfaction to decline. But at least there were no major tensions yet, although the situation was changing very quickly. They found food, the legendary hunting grounds, with really large supplies. This should at least temporarily solve my food problem, just like building sawmills solved the material problem. I had the money for that, of course, from voluntary donations. I literally promised everything as long as they gave me the money. The overseers also eagerly encouraged others to work harder. So 10 weeks before the whiteout, the situation wasn't looking that bad. I even managed to recover the original population. Society was also in a very good mood. It looked good, really good. Four weeks to go, things are good. Just before the storm arrived, I sent out one last expedition to explore those hills. After all, nothing bad could happen to them, right? And the whiteout arrived. At the same time, a lot of new population came to my city. But how? Well, unfortunately, I think this is the moment where I'll have to thank you, dear citizens of this city, for the time we've spent together. But we only have 4 weeks left to live, and I have to survive for 30 or 40 weeks. I practically shut down all the buildings in the city. I'm not even conducting research anymore, everything has been halted. Either way, it's not looking good, I'm literally losing all my resources and I just have no more food. Well, okay, theoretically I have no food. Because, you know what they say, you learn the caloric value of a friend in times of hardship. But I'm not giving up. I left a stockpile of coal here and sent a survivalist team to collect it. Maybe they'll survive. And I'm barely in the positive. Really, plus three is all that's keeping me from death. Alright, since let's say the city is relatively secured, I decided to take advantage of this difficult situation politically and introduce a few laws that strengthened my power. When this ball of evil fills up, they'll all throw me out into the cold. I almost blew up the generator. Okay, turn it off. Luckily, thanks to the coal reserves I collected, I should survive until the end of the whiteout. I also set up a propaganda office. I think it will come in handy, and very much so. And I managed to survive. And I don't think anyone even died. Suspicious. What did they eat during that time? But really, it was only the coal reserve I found that saved me. Compared to other difficulty levels, I was really close to failure, and from what I see, for the next 100 weeks, no storm is likely to threaten me. I only have two temperature drops. The first storm is behind me, there will be more, and to survive them, I decided to expand my logistics centers, to have more survivalist teams. Because I know that somewhere on this map, there might be places to establish three other cities. They just need to be found. I've also been gradually increasing the strength of the bum faction. I won't hide that their ability to convince other factions helped me a lot. And uh, it will probably help me even more, as I'll be changing the spirit of the city in the near future to something a little more... The secret police will definitely help with that too, which I could use for various purposes. For example, improving relations with a given faction. The next step was to introduce more radical laws, which steered me more towards adapting to the existing conditions. However, as you can see, not everyone liked it. My strategy of exploring Frostland has paid off. I'm finding lots of materials that could come in handy in some emergency situations. Bruh. I found the first place for a new city. A materials colony, to be exact, but I won't deal with it now because another storm is already approaching. Right next to the colony site, I found a giant oil drilling location. This will never run out. Speaking of oil, I managed to find another city. And it's so close to the materials colony that I'll connect everything with one route. A good idea before the next storm hits would probably be to upgrade the generator and just in case, dig down to the geothermal sources. This time, however, I'm gathering much larger reserves. Although I remember that last time it turned out to be insufficient and now I only have three times more of them. And from what I calculate, it should last me for 12 weeks, right? And the storms last 40. People also started disappearing under mysterious circumstances. I wonder if they know something about it. Since I felt threatened, I introduced my personal guard. On Frostland, I found a military crypt with cores. As many as 10, they'll definitely come in handy. Especially since I'm gathering resources to establish two more colonies, but only after the second storm, which is approaching. And that's assuming I find a third place for the colony. Because without food, this might get tricky. I'm missing a colony for food production. Wait, there it is. My scouts encountered another group who told them about a place rich in food. Could this be the third city? Fingers crossed.
I'm sending the scouts to search. As usual before the storm there's an extra cold drop and then whiteout number 2 hit which I think I'm better prepared for even though this storm is minus 90 degrees and lasts for about 50 weeks. Oh great, so each one will be worse. The worst part of these was that during them I didn't receive any resources. At least not from the areas where the storm reached but I was still getting oil from my outpost in the north. To be honest even if those deliveries stopped I have a backup coal mine here. Well I prepared for this. Winter storms are the perfect crisis situation to further strengthen my rule. I was already close to full power anyway. Martial law. Just, you know, as a precaution, I'm definitely not going to use it. These storms really increased trust in my authority. It wasn't until halfway through the storm that my fuel supplies got cut off. So now I am relying on stockpiles, but it doesn't look too bad. This means it might be smart to find fuel supplies as far north from me as possible, unless the storms can come from different directions. Really, right next to the city. A place to extract oil with 30 million units. And it can be upgraded to a permanent settlement. How did I miss this? Honestly, this whiteout doesn't scare me too much right now. But what comes after? With those temperature drops, that's a much bigger problem. Also, I'm running out of materials. That's why my next research goal will be to invent deep mines. During the second storm, I turned off my logistics centers to slow down the drop in oil supplies. I won't lie, when the fuel ran out, my coal supplies started depleting much faster. That's why I'm switching the generator to increased efficiency mode. And from what I see, I've researched the second generator level. I just forgot to build it, which I'm doing now. The second generator level allowed me to use the fuel type more efficiently, I currently set it to coal and after all my actions I now have 64 weeks worth of coal reserves. Easy. But the most important thing was the current vote. I encouraged everyone to vote yes and convinced the machinists who were the most resistant to elect me as the eternal ruler of this city. I mean the captain. It was truly a happy day for me. Long live the captain. And uh, honestly, it's a huge relief uh, because I no longer have to worry about maintaining authority. The council has basically become my puppet, which not everyone liked, but I told them to keep coming to work. You've got to keep up appearances for the people. Now I could establish any law I wanted in the city and no one opposed me anymore. Finally the storm passed and I can get back to everything else. I'm sending out dozens of icebreakers to prepare locations for the final constructions. I also focused my research on discovering hubs to make my districts more efficient. And I finally built my first deep drill which will give me infinite materials. Overall the most optimal setup is to build three adjoining districts, leaving space in the middle for three hubs, a ray hub increases efficiency, air transport reduces the need for workers, and finally a maintenance hub saves tons of materials. Efficiency in Frostpunk is crucial, look at how much I've lowered the maintenance costs across the board. I made similar upgrades in the city center, focusing on heating and reducing illnesses. Unfortunately I had a high illness rate because of the dense housing in my districts. Oh, those need a lot of heat too. I decided to completely demolish my second residential region and rebuild it in a more optimal way. Finally. When I built my industrial district, I finally had basic goods in the positive. It only took me almost 500 weeks. Of course, this had a positive effect on the increase in heat stamps, which is the currency. Until now, I mainly got it from overseers or bums. They didn't rebel because the secret police encouraged them to. I also found a technology that allows me to produce materials from oil. And as it happens, I recently found a lot of oil on Frostland. And so the weeks passed, week 500, 502, I survived, for now. Unfortunately, I still can't find the third city, so I won't complete the mission objectives. And my worst enemy at this point was really the population growth. No, actually, my society was an even bigger problem, because in reality, only the Bohemians still supported me. The other factions were no longer satisfied, and that meant a civil war threatened me in the future. Oh well, I started building more residential districts. Nice. Far to the south of my city, I found a whaling outpost where I could set up a permanent base. And maybe this will help me maintain two more cities after all. So I immediately connected to my network. I have to admit, I was already building real air highways across Frostland, with zeppelins moving along them, it looks cool, really an important note at the bottom. <coughs> it turns out that second level settlements are storm resistant, and that really changed a lot. I have to admit, the whaling settlement totally solved my food problems. But in the meantime, I think the fourth storm arrived, which surprised me a bit because I stopped paying attention to the weather. I switched the generator to oil and increased its efficiency. Now you understand why. Unfortunately, I'm having more and more social problems. The overseers are on the brink of rebellion, but I think I found the cause. I totally neglected the society research branch, and here are all those fucked things you can do in this game. Like communal parenthood. I just implemented it. Mandatory marriages or rotational relationships. I want wonder which one you would choose. Experimental treatment, which speeds up research. I don't know why, but some people said hospitals aren't a good place for medical experiments. I survived another storm, so now I'll start founding new colonies. 
And only now did I realize that my oil colony had an infinite food source. Establishing two new colonies also solved my housing problems because now the colonists are happily marching to their new homes. The first colony is established, the material one, and this is roughly what it looks like. How many prefabs are here? This will last me the rest of the game, there's also plenty of materials, and the fuel colony is probably the best place to build a lot of housing. How much space is here? and uh, three gigantic fuel sources. In both colonies, of course, I started with housing because we all know what happens when there's a shortage, everyone dies. Then I dug through to all my resources wherever I could and I built geothermal heaters. In the meantime, it happened, the overseers went on strike. I sent the secret police to deal with them and maybe also threw some money their way. For now, you could say I bribed the strike, I fire up the first generator and the second generator and after introducing new laws and ideologies, some people wanted me to adopt the spirit of the city. Adaptation, to be precise. I can't say adaptation is the friendliest solution, because I'll be sending six citizens out into Frostland to die there. Choosing the spirit of the city is a very radical step, so first I'll invent prisons, they might come in handy. In my new colonies, I'm running out of workers, so I'm sending more population there, and to speed up the process, I'm bringing residents of Frostland into my city. Although, according to what's written here, I have a really high population growth in this main city. The overseers rebelled again, and I wasn't really sure how to prevent it. Everything is fine in this district, maybe building a prison will help, I'm constructing the first one now. To further increase population growth, I'm introducing a controlled birth program. This gave me the option to introduce reason as the second spirit of my city. The algorithm looks pretty solid, and I don't think anyone died because of it. I could speed up population growth by building incubation houses. Still, that description shocked me a bit. You probably remember the rotational partnership law? For some reason, not everyone liked it, but I was firm and decisive. Oops, this story seems to have taken a bad turn. Oh well, the game even reflected that. But going back to the main point, in the new cities, I'm also building logistic centers. And in these, I'm building more survival teams. Because I need to find where that third hidden city is. Some of my smaller colonies had to be supplied from my main city. But not much, even though the colonies were looking pretty nice. I don't know why it's so red here. Really red, but what are these people doing here? Never mind, my teams are now searching Frostland intensively. The fifth whiteout, still going strong. But suddenly, I started running out of a lot of coal. <coughs> an emergency situation, so I'm starting to introduce some radical solutions. I'll start with adaptation. An algorithm that will solve some of our problems will also come in handy, so I expelled the weak citizens, literally all the sick. They left my city, forever. With the algorithm, I sped up research, and now it's going fast. I also wanted to introduce a sense of community, so I decided on some radical ideas. I also changed some of my previous laws to ones that supported the community. And gaining the spirit of community itself brings universal equality. Really interesting bonuses. It turned out that the spirit of equality is incredibly strong. I love equality. Right after that, at the end of the fifth storm, I found the last city far to the north. I was also surprised that I had completed those two objectives, even though I had trouble in my second colony and big trouble. So, I immediately took over the food city and I started bringing all the people from Frostland that I had found somewhere out there to my city. Look at how many refugees are pouring in here. Huge numbers! But after they arrived, I then sent them right away to my colony. 10,000? No problem. And it really annoyed me that there wasn't a map filter to easily find those refugees. But anyway, I gathered more people into my city. And even though I just established that food colony, there aren't even any houses here yet. I'm immediately sending 10,000 colonists to the settlement. Two colonies completed. Settlers are arriving at the third colony and I did it. I can't believe it worked. That ending was incredibly easy. That doesn't change the fact that I feel an incredible sense of satisfaction for completing this campaign because the beginning was incredibly hard for me. And the end, I feel like I kind of exploited the game because I didn't even have a civil war. Let me know in the comments what you think about Frostpunk. If you like watching episodes with challenges, I recommend this episode from Lithuania where in 100 years I turn one of the poorest countries in Europe into a world economic hegemon.